Hi, Gordon Waite here. We're going to assemble a Renegade telescope, show you just how easy it is. Start with the base. Then comes the mirror cell, housing, and the bearings. Now this can go on in either direction. It can go on this way, or you can turn it around the other way and put it on there. 180 degrees, doesn't matter. And it just uh, sits over the bearings and drops right on there. You can tell that it's in place when it moves nice like that. Now I've got to take this, uh, right now I've got the ring on. The adapter ring is already on the telescope because we've got the tubes separate. So we've got adapter rings on. And this would be one time where you could put the mirror in right now if you wanted to do that. Or you have the option to wait until it's assembled and put the mirror in then. So right now I'm going to show you how to get the truss tubes on here. I grab them in pairs, put them in the sockets, and just my habit, but I turn it so the screws are in, makes absolutely no difference the direction those screws are facing. <laughs> and then tighten these up, and you don't want to really clamp down on them, you just want them to be tight enough so that the tubes will stay in place. So I do two there. Now all eight of the tubes are identical, so it doesn't matter what order you put them in, and it doesn't matter where you put any one given tube. Any tube can work in any position, and on top of that, they can work in either direction. This end of the tube can be the bottom or it can be the top. It doesn't matter a bit. And the final two. And again, you don't really clamp down on these. You just tighten them up until they're snug and the, and the tube will stay in place. Okay, now it's time to put the upper tube assembly on. Now the upper tube assembly does have a right and a wrong way. Uh, if you look at the bottom of the telescope, I call that the bottom, it's kind of the downside. Uh, you want the focuser to be at uh, about a 90 degree angle to those. So the focuser in this case goes on my side here. Maybe I'll turn this around a little bit. <clears throat> so the focuser is going to go on this side a little to my left. Now what I do here is take these tubes and bring them in so that they make a triangle. And I start with two sides. And they're going to fall on you, and that's just how they work. So I kind of make my triangles here. And now basically, I just take the tube, the upper tube assembly, and I rust these two in place, and then get two more in place at the same time. Okay, now I've got these two sets of tubes in, and I want to tighten them up just a little bit. Now again, you don't clamp down on them, just tighten them up a bit. Get these two over here. Of course, you don't want to let go of the upper tube assembly while you're doing this. Lift it up enough to get this guy in. Usually you lift it up and one of the other ones comes loose. So I'll loosen these two in the right, nudge that one up, these two up, and then drop her back down. There, now we got all four of them on there. It's a little tricky the first time you do it, it's kind of awkward. But uh, after you do it three or four times, it's kind of a fun little game that you get to play with the telescope every time you want to use it. So now I just tighten these up here. And at this point, I like to walk all the way around the telescope, tighten up all the top ones, and make sure they're all seated properly. When you look at the edge of it, you don't want to see any of the black ball here. You should just see the silver nut. And that tells you that the ball's in properly and the telescope's level and good. And this one's good too. And then after that's done, I go around the bottom and give all of the bottom ones a little nudge and make sure that all the bottom ones are still tight. And then the last thing to do on this telescope is to put the 
finder on. This little finder, there's a wide slot at the top and a narrow slot at the bottom. And if you look at the bottom of the finder, there's a wide hook and a narrow hook. And you just put the wide hook in the top, and it's like a little hinge, then bring it down. There's a little button to push on the back. I'll show you the, just a little button like for a battery compartment, sort of. So I put the hinge in, put the battery down, push the little button in just a bit, and it snaps right on. So now we're ready to go. Final step would be to put the mirror in the telescope. And once again, from here, you could put the mirror in through the side. And then uh, if you want to put the shroud on the telescope, and I do recommend observing with the shroud always, uh, put the shroud on before you put the finder in place. And that's the easiest way to go. Hi, Gordon Waite from Waite Research here. I'm going to show you today how I put a 12 and a half inch mirror onto the mirror cell in a Renegade telescope. Uh, when you've got the base set up and then the, the uh, mirror housing here is on top of the base okay, that's a good time for you to put in the mirror into the telescope. Uh, our mirror cell is an 18 point mirror cell and it has little plastic retainers in here to keep it all in place. You can see it kind of acts a little like jello. <laughs> when you push one place it kind of uh, pops up in another. So just look at the mirror cell and make sure you don't have anything drastically wrong. Uh, normally, you know, 99 times out of 100 it'll be fine. But if one of the little plastic parts should break or something, you might have one of the triangles up on the back edge or something and, and that wouldn't be good. The second thing is you want to make sure that the top set of screws, the ones that hold the mirror down, are all backed away and uh, not hanging over the edge. These are uh, little nylon screws, black screws, and they turn just with your fingertips. They're, they're pretty loose in there. So just make sure that the top set have been backed out. Now at the bottom of the telescope, this end next to the uh, curves here, next to the bearings, there are two other bolts that come all the way through, one here and one over here. Those two you want to leave alone. Those are actually the edge support for the mirror itself. When you put the mirror in, the edge is going to rest up against that and it hits the mirror at just the right spot. And, and they're just the right distance out. If you ever do mess them up or play with them by accident, they should be screwed out until they're even with the bottom piece of the, of the little retainer here. There's kind of a, a step on there and th this flat area is where this should be adjusted and the quick way to do it is just put like a, a something flat and square over it and screw it out until it meets it but uh, normally you just don't play with that bottom screw but make sure the four top ones are are backed away so we can get the mirror in easily now I'll go grab the mirror and I'll show you how I put it in there okay I've got the 12 and a half inch mirror in hand here and uh, this is really a simple process. This little mirror is made out of quartz and it's really thin. It's only about three quarters of an inch thick or slightly more. Basically you want to just drop it in between the supports onto the triangles of the mirror cell. And I sort of keep it up toward the top of the telescope uh, and then it needs to be pushed down onto the bottom uh, till it hits those edge supports. And it's just a little ways. You can see I'll do it again. It starts up there and you just push it down in this direction toward the curves until it hits against those two uh, nylon screws down there. And that positions the mirror in the proper place for observing. Now after it's down there, uh, technically gravity works with you here and you could use the telescope without the retainer bolts. But most of the time I like to uh, screw the retainer bolts over the surface of the mirror just to make sure that if uh, you bump the telescope hard or something that the mirror doesn't come flying out. So basically you just screw those top screws out until they go over the top edge of the mirror. You can see I just put it out until it just barely comes over the top of the mirror. And then there's two at the top. I get this one out here, and the last one over here. And when those come out over the mirror, uh, when the mirror is tilted upward then, like so, it would keep the mirror from falling forward or falling out of the mirror cell uh, in case of an accident. The thing though in the process is to remember about those because now if you try to lift this out to remove it those guys are in the way and you're going to hit the mirror on them. 
Now they are made out of nylon, so they're not going to scratch the mirror. But uh, it's a little disconcerting to have something uh, in the way of the mirror when you're, you're trying to get it out. So before you go to take the mirror out of the telescope, just uh, unwind those bolts back into the housings again. And clear up the space. And of course, during this whole process, you don't want to touch the surface of the mirror. You get pretty used to handling it just by the back and the edges, uh, but you don't want to get fingerprints or anything on the mirror. And just one quick note, you really don't want to wash or try to clean the mirror. It, it will get dusty during the course of normal use and just let the dust accumulate. When the, the dust is kind of intolerable, the trick is to take the mirror out of the telescope and give it just a rinse off with distilled water. Just rinse distilled water over it, tip it on its edge to dry, you know, put it in a drying rack of some type, and wait till the mirror dries, then back in the telescope. You really don't want to do any rubbing action on it or try to use any cleaner or anything like that. Just a bath with, with distilled water is about all you need to do to keep it dust free. The one point I'd make, if you put it in in this process before the poles are in place, that's really easy and you don't have any problems. But you can also wait until after you have the poles on. After you have the poles on, you do the exact same process, except you have to take the mirror on its edge and bring it in through the side and then put it down. There's plenty of room to do that, but you do have to be a little careful not to hit the uh, mirror on the edge of the pole or something like that. Uh, so either way, do it here before you put the poles on or after you have the poles on and you're using the uh, adapter ring. Uh, it can go through the poles. So a couple options there for putting the mirror in the telescope. A couple of warnings about the telescope mirror. When you put the mirror into the telescope, you don't want the sun to play off the mirror. So you'll want to have some sort of a piece of round cardboard or something to place over the mirror uh, so that the sun doesn't bounce off it. The mirror is a giant solar collector and it will focus an image of the sun about, in this case, about 60 inches away from the mirror. So even if the sun is at a grazing angle and coming at an angle, it can form an image uh, 60 inch, inches away from the mirror. And that image is hotter than you can imagine. It will burn your skin. It could definitely damage your eyes if you happen to catch it in the eyes. But it's very hot and easily it can catch stuff on fire. I've seen people burn up a telescope by leaving it out in the daytime with the mirror exposed. Now if you have the shroud, uh, on the telescope you don't have a problem the shroud will protect it but if the mirror is is unprotected you want to put something over it so that the sun doesn't strike it okay i wanted to show you how you take the truss tubes off the bottom of the telescope leaving uh, using this adapter ring and it's really easy here there's uh, four of these knobs that just come right out you just take those four knobs off Do this with the telescope level, <laughs> otherwise it could fall off. But then you just grab hold of the truss tubes and lift straight up until it clears the mirror cell and it's off. Okay, when you're assembling the telescope, uh, the Renegade, and you have the truss tubes on the adapter ring so that it's a big upper tube assembly, I'll show you how to put those on. There's four sockets for the four uh, knobs uh, to go in. And they're keyed here so that you can only put the tube on in one way. These two are close together and these two are far apart. So you can just look on the truss tube assembly and see how it goes on. Now if you stay here, I'll bring it over. And you can see here, the two short ones, the two that are close together go on the top. Now the one thing you want to do is to be careful that you don't drop a truss uh, ring on these bolts at the top. That would not be a, a good thing. They're nylon, they might snap off and you'd have to replace one. So then if you just look through the hole, you can see when it lines up. And after it lines up, you just drop the thing in there, give it a spin, and it's in. Once you have one in, just uh, kind of feel on the sides until it's lined up. The second one goes in just as easily. And then over to the other side. You have number three. And number four. And 
one thing if you have the mirror in there it should always have a cover on it and avoid the idea of running the thing over the mirror you don't ever want to drop anything on the mirror or take any chance of that so you go around from the outside now on these knobs they don't have to be tight tight you just want to snug them that's all that you're going to need is for them to be snug uh, if you don't want to really crank them down in there uh, it doesn't do any good and it might damage the knob or the wood on the telescope. I'm going to mount this uh, cloak onto the telescope and if you look in the top of the of a cloak it'll have a little tag up there that says top uh, so you know which end goes in the top which end goes in the bottom. So what I do is to go to the bottom of the cloak and put it on first. Basically this is made with a stretch fabric and uh, a piece of elastic in the end so basically you can just stretch it over the top of the telescope. I like put it over my shoulder to kind of keep it all up there. Worry it down here over the knobs and everything. It's small enough where you can get your arms around it. And once you've cleared all of the uh, knobs and the focuser, basically you can just give it a little tug and on it goes. So now at the top, it'll hang up here at the top. So you worry that over the top ring a bit. Pull it down a little more. Now get it on the underside of the focuser. Now I like to leave it above the knobs, but under the focuser. And get that smoothed out all around and nice. Then when you go down to the bottom of the telescope, you can grab hold of the hem and just pull it down here until it's snug. And again, pull it over the knobs and uh, onto the body of the telescope there. Run around the back and pull it over these knobs. Smooth it out, and there it is, a beautiful renegade telescope. Nice blue cloak in place.